In this video, we're gonna go over the general framework of how to grade a comic book. Stay tuned. Bry's Comics. Incredibly exciting announcement. I am giving away 50 CGC graded slabs on my next Whatnot show, Wednesday, December 21st at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Link in the description to bookmark the show and set up a new account and get $15 towards your first purchase. It's just going to be back to back to back to back to back CGC slab giveaways until we've given away 50 CGC slabs and you have a chance at winning $1,000 in cash and a bunch of premium slabs. So the way it's gonna work is if you win two of the giveaways in that stream, you get to spin a wheel. And on that wheel is five spots. Four of those spots on that wheel are premium slabs worth a pretty penny. And one of the spots on that wheel is $1,000 in cash. So if you win two of the giveaways, you spin the wheel and you hit the $1,000 in cash, I'm going to pack your free CGC slab winnings with $1 bills and you're gonna open it and you're gonna love it and I'm gonna love it. I hope somebody wins. Why am I doing this? It's fun. It's just fun as hell for me uh, and I had a great year. I'm really appreciative of all the support that I've had from all of you all throughout this year and it's just a small token of my appreciation and a way to give back. I'm also going to have items in the buy it now for $15. So if you set up a new account using my link in the description, you're guaranteed to get a free book. You just have to pay shipping on uh, your first purchase, but you don't have to pay any shipping if you uh, come by and just win something that's all included. It's going to be like $600 in shipping that I, I pay. I I really hope to see you guys there. I'm incredibly excited. It's going to be a lot of fun and I hope to see you there. Welcome to Bry's Comics. This channel is all about comic investment and speculation. And one of the most important things about comic book investment is knowing how to grade a comic book. And in this video, we're going to go over the general framework of how you determine a grade and more specifically how CGC uh, determines a grade. And it all comes from information that's presented in this book released by CGC, the official CGC guide to grading comics. Now, full disclaimer, I am not associated with CGC in any way other than I am a comic book collector and a comic book dealer. Um, I have no interest in, in the, how this book performs. I get no kickback from it. This is just me presenting information here because I think it's incredibly valuable uh, to collectors everywhere. And before we hop into it, I want to mention we always do a monthly giveaway on this channel. This month, we're giving away two X 12 cent X-Men books. If you subscribe to the channel, comment on this video and like this video you're entered to win one and if you head over to brycecomics.com and sign up for the newsletter over there you're also entered to win a free slab each and every month that's also where I send out first access to new collection special discount codes mystery boxes and more um, use code collect 10 for 10% off all in stock items at brycecomics.com follow me over on Instagram for trades for grails and other fresh content over there so in this video we are going to present and discuss the four main aspects of grading the comic book. Number one, establishing a first impression. Number two, assessing the page quality and the aesthetic quality. Number three, confirming completeness. And number four, inspecting the defects. Once you've done all four of those things, you can actually assign a grade to the comic book. And the idea here is to train ourselves to start thinking about how CGC would grade the comic book because CGC is the premier grading company. Most people throughout the hobby will have their books graded by CGC. So when you're establishing raw books, uh, we're talking about here how to grade the comic as CGC would grade the comic. We're not talking about using Overstreet grading standards or any other grading standards because Overstreet doesn't have a grading service. They are a different company altogether and CGC does not use Overstreet standards. So it doesn't do you any good to understand the Overstreet grading standards if you're going to have your book graded by CGC or CBCS because neither use uh, the Overstreet standards. And especially now that this book has been released where CGC actually presents their grading standards, now we can really hone in and establish grading standards based on how they are going to grade the comic. The first step in grading a comic book is to establish a first impression. And this is the only part of grading a comic book that has to be done in order. It has to be done first. That first thing that you do is you establish the first impression and then you go to the next steps and fine tune it from there to arrive at the final grade. Now, establishing a first impression of a comic book is a skill that's developed over time. If you were to have a first impression and look at a comic book and say, this looks like an 8.5, 
you can't do that without a whole backlog of experience of looking at and seeing 8.5 so that you know what an 8.5 looks like. This is a huge obstacle to overcome for new collectors because how are you going to get you know, experience looking at hundreds and then thousands of comic books to be able to establish a first impression. Well, one thing that I like to do on this channel, when I unbox books from CGC, I like to do in-depth looks at the books and compare them with the graders notes. It's a huge pain in the butt. It's actually a bunch of extra work, but I like to do it because I think it's a valuable resource for people that don't have the time or money or you know, whatever it is to submit, you know, hundreds of books to CGC themselves. They can actually just use the videos on this channel to get more comfortable with grading comics without ever having to actually submit to CGC yourself. So I started a new playlist. I'll put a link somewhere up at the top and a link down in the description to a playlist of me unboxing books from CGC, comparing the graders notes so that you can use that content as experience to get experience of establishing a first impression. Um, so over time, that uh, playlist is going to grow and it will be hours upon hours of content where you can just get experience establishing a first impression. If that sounds interesting to you, or if you find that helpful and you're not already subscribed, please consider hitting subscribe. I certainly would appreciate it. So the first step in establishing a first impression is evaluating the cover of the comic. The cover is the most harshly graded and scrutinized part of the grading process because it's the most important part of the comic. It's what we see, especially after the book has been encapsulated the cover and the image and the way it presents is the most important part of comic books to most collectors. So some of the questions you might want to ask yourself when looking at the cover, you're going to want to look at the front of the cover, especially along the edges, the three edges and the spine. You're going to want to open the front cover and look on the inside, especially at the spine. You're going to want to look for any kind of cover tanning. You're going to want to flip the book over, look at the three edges and the spine on the back side of the cover, open the back cover and evaluate the inside side of the back cover as well. That's all part of the establishing your first impression of the book. You're also going to want to look at the interior pages. At this part in the grading process, you don't need to actually count the pages or look for actual defects in the pages. You're just assessing a first impression of the book. So when you look at those interior pages, um, you, you'll especially want to note if it's, if it's exceptionally good page and paper quality or if it's exceptionally bad uh, page and paper quality. And if those two things come into play with your first impression of the book. Step number two is assessing the page quality and the aesthetic quality of the comic. Now, this doesn't necessarily have to be done in order, but for the sake of this video, we're going to call this step number two. Page quality is something that was incredibly surprising to me as a collector um, when I found out the nuances of page quality. There are 23 different page quality designations that a comic book can have uh, from CGC, ranging from white to brittle. And then there's also paint and blue. And I'll throw up on the screen all of the different page quality designations, um, but pink and blue are a very small subset of Golden Age books, um, sometimes with a very specific era. There was actually pink tinted or blue tinted paper that was cheaper than the regular paper, and some uh, publishers used that. I believe it was Fox Publishing that used pink paper, something like that. So you very rarely see that. It's only a very small uh, subset of actual books. I have seen some modern age books with pink page quality designations and some people were asking a premium for those books and it turns out that that is just a typo. No modern age book has pink pages. Uh, it was just a typo on the CGC label. Um, so the page qualities range from white to brittle and this is where there is a ton of nuance and I'm going to say that the most important thing with page quality is determining whether it's exceptionally good or exceptionally bad. Okay and the, there's nuance to that as well. Well, is it exceptionally good for the era? Is it exceptionally bad for the era? For example, a golden age book that has white page quality designation is exceptionally good and will definitely impact the value of the book. Whereas a bronze age book that has brittle pages is exceptionally bad because the vast majority have way better page quality than that. So that will negatively impact the grade. And everything in between brittle, 
and you know off white is is it definitely can have an impact on the grade but it's minimal and what i mean by that is i think you will be hard pressed to find for example hulk 181 i think you would be hard pressed to find a, a substantial difference in the sales data between uh, Hulk 181s with white pages and Hulk 181s with off-white to white or off-white or even cream to off-white. I think it would be hard to find uh, some substantial definitive price differences for these subtle differences in page quality except for the extreme side. So some things to note about page quality is typically all of the interior pages of a comic age at the same rate, typically. Um, so you can use just one page of the comic to uh, determine the page quality. There are a few exceptions to that. And it's easier to assess the page quality if the pages are a uniform tint that exhibit uniform aging. So examples of uniform page quality is white, off-white, cream, tan, those are all uh, uniform page quality where the whole page looks the same. Now the interim ones like off white to white is when you have kind of like a halo effect. So aging usually happens, if here is the comic book, aging usually happens starting on the outside of the comic book and works its way in creating almost a halo effect. So if you have uh, slightly browned pages on the outside that could be off white to white in the center. Um, and as that browning or tanning on the outside edges gets worse and worse, the page quality goes down. Um, and so that's where you have those uh, off-white to white, cream to off-white is when the page doesn't have a uniform tint. Another thing to note about page quality is white doesn't necessarily mean the color of the actual page. Some comic books were printed on newsprint or pulp paper that came off the press looking like a, a light brown or a light tan color. That light tan color can still get the white page quality designation if it's the same color as it was when it rolled off the press. So white page quality just means that that page quality is the same or very, very close to the same as as it was when it rolled off the press. It can actually be a different color. So colors might not actually be the best way to designate page quality, but it is what it is. We've come this far and we've been doing it for this long. I think it should just stay the way it is, but just keep that in mind that the page quality doesn't necessarily have to line up with the actual color. It has to do with the degree of aging. There's nuance to this. One example I have is I submitted uh, this Nova number one that I have behind me. I submitted it five times to CGC. I have a whole video about that, about why I did that until it finally got the 9.8 white pages. And what was funny is that sometimes it would come back like a 9.4 off white to white, 9.6 off white to white, 9.6 white, and then finally 9.8 white. And this was the first time that I thought, how could it be that the page quality is so subjective? I thought, you know, that they would just take like something that you would get at like Home Depot that shows the different uh, tints of white and hold it up to the comic book and say, if it's this, it's white. If it's this, it's off white. But I quickly realized after I learned more about comics, the nuance to page quality, the nuance to the type of paper that it was printed on, the tints, the various tints. I mean, there are so many variations to the tints of the colors of paper. It became clear to me that the page quality is also a subjective part of the grading. And white pages could, if it just has just a tiny bit of browning just in one corner where it's starting to get off white, it could still get that white page quality designation if the grader on that day felt like, ah, yeah, this is white pages. So it is a, a subjective thing. So one of the most important things to assess with page quality when you're evaluating a comic is if it has brittle pages or not. So brittle pages and brittleness can severely impact uh, the value of a comic book. Sometimes it's totally obvious, like if the corner of, of the comic is just falling apart due to brittleness, that will greatly affect the grade of the comic. So brittleness doesn't necessarily have to do with the color of the pages. It has to do with the actual structure and integrity of the pages. And that's a very important thing to be able to note. Usually brittleness starts with chipping or splitting, um, usually around the centerfold, so you can find it on the cover or at the centerfold um, of the wraps, usually at the top and bottom of the comic book. If you start to see it splitting due to brittleness, that can definitely impact uh, the value and the grade of the comic. You know, it's not important to, to completely nail this down to a science. What's most important is to be able to identify the two different extremes of page quality and the nuance of page quality in that said era. So knowing what's good page quality, 
quality for a certain era and what's uh, bad page quality for a certain era. And when you're um, buying and evaluating comic books, you may want to avoid certain kinds or another. That comes down to a preference as a collector. Part of step two, in addition to assessing the page quality, is the aesthetic quality of the comic. And this has to do with uh, the entirety of the comic, the cover and the interior pages. And it has to do with the whiteness, the brightness, and the gloss of the comic. And this is a, a nuanced part that can oftentimes is like the, the, the last determining factor that either bumps a, a book up or down, you know, half a point in grade. It could be the difference between a 7.0 and a 7.5 or a 7.0 and a 6.5 is that aesthetic quality. And let's flip the camera around. I'm going to show a couple examples of uh, aesthetic quality in some different books. I got some books here to show examples of whiteness, brightness, and gloss. So the whiteness would be something that you would consider in, uh, you know, this white area of the book. It's a lot easier to consider if the cover is mostly white. So this is a bad example for whiteness um, because it's going to be hard to tell whiteness from this front cover. Now on the back, you can tell it's mostly white. So this would be an area where you would, you know, evaluate the whiteness of the book. And what you will notice with this particular book is that it doesn't have great whiteness. It's exhibiting some signs of uh, tanning. And one of the things about in this here is, is a dust shadow along with some tanning. So this part of the book was sticking out and dust settled on it over the years and gave it this shadow. But there's also some tanning, which is that, you know, turning of brown and kind of like a halo effect here starts on the outer edges and works its way in. So on the front cover though, so the whiteness of this book is not great. All right. It, that is definitely going to count against it for the grade. But as far as the brightness, that's where the colors come into play. And as you can see on this book, this book has superior gloss. I mean, the reds in this thing look wet. It looks like it just rolled off the press and it's from 1951. So this one definitely has exceptional uh, brightness and gloss. So the colors pop, the gloss pops, and you can just really tell it. It has great brightness and gloss, but not great whiteness. This one is in the same boat. This is Strange Tales 111. It's from the collection of Joe and Nadia Manorino, and usually books from pedigree collections exhibit signs of really good uh, gloss and brightness because they were from collectors that took good care of their comics. Now, this one is actually in the exact same boat as that one. It has good gloss here. You can see with uh, the Human Torch, the reds just look wet. Um, and the reds are, are usually the, the color that pops the most with these things. But here on Asbestos Man, you can see that his colors also pop. But here in the, these lighter colored areas of the cover, you can tell that it's almost like this translucent look. And it's the same on the back where you can kind of see through the cover. That is a sign of tanning. And and that will definitely negatively impact the grade. So the whiteness of this one is not great, but the brightness and gloss are exceptional. So here's an example of some golden age books that have almost no gloss. Here you can see on the cover, it looks like a matte finish. It's not shiny. Um, it just looks like a matte finish to the book and the same on the back. So this is an example of a book with, uh, you know, not good gloss. Now with, Golden Age comics, it can get kind of tricky because sometimes the way that they were produced, they just never had gloss. Um, or the brightness could come down to how much ink was left in the printer at the time that the book was actually printed. So this is just an example of how, you know, the gloss can compare. If you compare the reds in these two books, you can just see that the reds in the camera comics is a matte finish versus this wet, glossy finish for Strange Tales. The next thing that you want to evaluate with aesthetic quality is color fading. And this is a huge one for me. It's a huge pet peeve in collecting. If a book is exhibiting color fading, I will probably steer completely away from it because to me, the way the comic presents over time is incredibly important. And one of the things to consider with color fading is this is something that can happen even after the book is engraved and encapsulated in a case. If you take your CGC books and you set them up in a way where natural light 
light hits those books every day. Even if it's natural light, just for a short period of time as that sun goes overhead and it gets an hour or two of sunlight every single day, you absolutely over time will see fading on your comic books and it will no longer be the grade that the book is graded at. CGC does not guarantee that the book will maintain that grade. It's just the grade that it got at that time when it was graded. So how the book is stored and handled after it's graded can lower the grade of the book. I've seen a lot of books come up for sale that are clearly faded that happened after grading that drastically reduced the value of uh, the, the value of the book. And I see them go to auction houses where it might be a 9.0, but it's severely faded. And I would know that that book, there's no way it's getting more than a 7.0 uh, with that amount of fading. This is why it's really important as a collector to be able to recognize uh, fading and what's allowable in certain grades. Step number three in grading a comic is to confirm the completeness. This is an incredibly important part of the book because because it drastically impacts the value of the comic book is checking to see that the whole thing is there. So this is where you have to actually count each page and make sure that on each page, there's no coupons missing. There's no pieces missing. There's no panels missing. There's no tears on those pages. It's all done right here. So a couple things to notate before we get into this a little bit deeper is terminology. So there's pages, there's readable pages, and there's wraps. So a page is when you grab the comic and you turn the page, it has a front and a back side, that's one page. A readable page is page one and two. So one page has two readable pages, but for the purpose of counting pages, you just count the actual page, not the readable pages. A typical modern comic book is uh, 16 wraps that when folded together become 32 pages. Uh, so different eras of different comics have different page counts and different wrap counts. And it's important to know what you're looking for for each book. I don't think it's important to memorize the different eras, but I'll put it up on the screen of the common uh, number of pages and wraps for the different comic book eras. But I think it's not necessary to memorize that. I think if you're evaluating a, a very expensive comic book, just Google how many pages is this supposed to have? How many wraps is this supposed to have? How many on one side of the centerfold uh, versus the other side? Because in some eras, it wasn't even. In some golden age eras, there was uh, the staples were placed in a weird spot on the comic. So it's important to look it up. For example, All-Star Comics number eight has 18 wraps, uh, which was not standard for the era. So if you're you know, going to purchase an All-Star Comics number eight and you count 16 pages, you might 16 wraps, you might think you're all good to go, but guess what? You're actually missing two wraps. So it's important just to, just to Google it. The information is out there, especially for really uh, valuable and expensive comics. When it comes to a missing page or a missing wrap, the book taps out at a 0.5. So if the book is otherwise structurally completely sound, but it's missing a page, maximum grade it can get is a 0.5. Same with a missing wrap. Uh, so it's really important to be able to uh, identify those missing pages or those missing wraps. Next comes coupons. This is probably the next most common thing to be cut out, especially uh, in the 70s when Marvel was doing Marvel value stamps and people were encouraged to cut out pieces of the comic book. That drastically impacts the grade. If a coupon is cut out or a Marvel value stamp is cut out of a book, if it's otherwise structurally perfect, it taps out at a 6.0. But usually they'll get a qualified grade. So usually if the comic book grades higher than a 3.5, but has a coupon missing or something, so if it's like a high grade book with the coupon cut out, then it will just get that high grade with the qualified designation. So this is why qualified books have such a drastically lower value than unqualified books is because technically, you know, they would tap out at a 6.0 because it's incomplete, which CGC, coincidentally, in 2022, uh, stopped using the term complete and incomplete, which I think is kind of dishonest. I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. I think that it's incredibly important for collectors to know if a book is complete or not. And they got did away with the term. Um, and stay tuned for a future video where I go into more detail why I think it's unethical to not notate whether a book is complete or not. Obviously, since it affects the value so much and the market has determined that it is so important to people to know that a book is unrestored and complete in its original form, we need to make 
make it easy to identify on the labels. They did away with it. I won't go any deeper into it in this video. Now, when it has to do with pieces out of a comic, you'll notice uh, if you watch any of my unboxing videos, there's all different types of pieces out. There's very small piece out, there's tiny piece out, there's moderate piece out, which coincidentally moderate in my opinion means pretty darn bad. Um, and so there's different sizes of piece out of the comic and that affects the grade differently. So you can have a tiny, tiny little piece out and the book can still get a 9.8 or you can have a large piece out and it will affect the grade uh, much, much more. Step number four is inspect the defects of the comic book. So essentially, this is going a little bit deeper than you did on your initial first impression. Now you have a real good idea of, you know, your first impression of the comic book, the page quality you've gone through, checked for completeness, and now it's time to actually inspect and scrutinize in more detail the different defects before you arrive at an actual grade. This is the most nuanced part of grading a comic book because CGC has notated 109 different defects. And in their book, the official CGC guide to grading comic books, it actually lists out all 109 defects and the different severities and how they can affect the grade. So this is how you start to see the magnitude of grading a comic book and the subjectivity of it. There's 109 different defects and each one of those defects has a different degree of severity. And any given comic book can have any given combination of those 109 defects and any combination of severity of those, combina of those defects. You can quickly see that there is a huge number of possible conditions and defects that a comic book can actually exhibit, and which is why it's so much of an art and a science to grade comics. This doesn't make inconsistencies in grading from CGC or any other grading company any less frustrating, but it can help to understand why there is so much nuance and inconsistencies in grading because of the magnitude of the task at hand, which is evaluating those different defects and arriving at a final grade. So as you go through the book, you go through the cover, you inspect the front cover, the inside front cover, the interior pages, the back cover, the inside back cover, you scrutinize the book, you take a mental inventory and a written inventory of all those defects. Now it's time to assign the grade. So when it comes to assigning the final grade of the comic book, there are two different methods for arriving at the grade. There's the subtractive method and the narrowing method. The subtractive method has to do with high grade comic books. So you start with a 10.0, a perfect grade, and you subtract the different subtle defects to arrive at a final grade. The narrowing method involves starting at a grade range and fine tuning the different defects to narrow it down to the final grade. And that works best for mid to low grade books. So in this book here, the official CGC guide to grading comics on page number 68, they give an actual example of using the subtractive and the narrowing method. So let's actually just read this example of the subtractive method to see how this would be used to arrive at a final grade. So the subtractive process can be illustrated using a comic that exhibits five separate defects in ascending order of severity and their individual effect on grade. So in this example, we're given five defects and how each one of those defects would affect the book by itself. And then it's saying we're going to evaluate those five defects together to come up with the final grade. So the first defect is light distribution ink along the top edge in a 9.8. Okay, so light distribution ink, if that's all it had, that would take the book down from a 10.0 to a 9.8. So it also has another defect, light finger bends to the right side of the cover, 9.4. So that means that if all this book had was the light finger bends to the right side of the cover, this book would be a 9.4. Um, it also has the defect of several small spine stress lines that break color. So if this book only had several small spine stress lines that break color, it would be a 9.0. When it says several in this case, uh, it's more than two. I'll tell you that much because a book can get uh, a 9.8 with several small color breaking defects. So it's kind of a weird example that they use here. I think it would have to, the, the term several is what's interpretable, but 
a 9.0 can have a lot of spine ticks. So several is kind of misleading right here. I think in this term, several means, you know, a lot, depending on what you think a lot is. So as you can see, there's a lot of nuance to this. Um, I wish they would just say the number, right? Like it would say six small color breaking spine ticks, not several. The next defect is a one inch corner crease to the cover, which would bring it down to an 8.0 or an 8.5. This is a very, very common uh, defect in the 8.0 to 8.5 range is a one inch crease in the corner. Uh, you see corner creases all the time. So if it has a one inch crease, it taps out at an 8.5, all right? So this is important in considering CPR. If you see a book that has a one inch corner crease that also has finger brands and all this stuff, but it's already an 8.5, there's no point in doing CPR on it because even if you improve those other things, it, the limiting crease is an 8.5. The next defect is a one inch tear to the cover, which would tap out at an 8.0. So a one inch tear is a 7.5 to an 8.0 by itself. I got a lot of crap once for saying, you know, this book has a tear. I think it taps out an 8.0 and someone said, there's no way a book would ever get an 8.0 with a tear. Well, here you have it guys, a one inch tear to the cover maxes out at an 8.0. So then it goes on to say that based on its two most severe defects, a corner crease and a tear, the comic will not grade any higher than an 8.0. So if we go back to the defects, the corner crease and the tear. So those that if it was just the corner crease, it would tap out an 8.5, but it has a corner crease and it has a tear and the tear taps out in an 8.0. So it won't, we know off the bat, it won't get any higher than an 8.0. Conversely, the two least severe defects, distribution ink and finger bends, are inconsequential to the grade. So when you have something in an 8.0 range, it's saying here that the distribution ink and the finger bends aren't going to affect the grade, uh, that the limiting factors are more important. The stress lines landing at a 9.0 may play a role in the final grade assessment. So here's where you're looking at all of these defects together and you say, okay, Okay, the one inch corner crease and the one inch tear means it taps out at an 8.0. But now we're gonna talk about uh, the distribution ink and the finger bends. That's not really gonna affect it because they just don't, they're, they're not nearly as important as uh, you know those two limiting factors. But you add to that the several uh, color breaking spine ticks and now that's where you take it down a little bit more from 8.0. Um, so it says, because the tear and the crease have an individual effect of 8.0, their combined presence might lower the grade to a 7.5. Factoring in the stress lines and assessing that the book's aesthetic appeal, it is decided that 7.5 is the accurate grade. So 7.5 uh, with some finger bends, uh, and so that means that, you know, you get those finger bends out, you're probably not going to get an 8.0 because of the spine stress lines. So this is where experience comes into play a lot um, for CPR and cracking books out. If you're like me, after seeing that example and reading that example, you're kind of scratching your head going, wait, what? Why, why do these defects matter and these defects don't matter? How come it wouldn't bring it down anymore? How is the combined presence? There's a lot of questions and I think it's the perfect example for grading because of that, because it's so subjective and this is the world of grading. And one thing to keep in mind is they don't provide an actual picture of the book in this example. It could be very well that if we saw this book in a 7.5, we may all be in consensus and say, oh yeah, this book is a 7.5. But when you see it listed out in steps and the rationale written out, it's kind of shaky and that's because grading is subjective. So now we're gonna look at the narrowing method and the example provided in this book. So it says that for the narrowing method, rather than descending from 10.0, this method starts at any point on the grading scale and is adjust, adjusted up or down accordingly. All right, so it goes on to say that, for example, a comic is quickly determined to be mid or low grade once in hand. Is the grade closer to a 6.0, a 4.0, or a 2.0? So you can see how you just drastically went down from, you know, seeing a new book to narrowing it down to, is it a 604 or 20? All right. And so you can say that from, it appears to be cl closest to a 4.0 of those three ranges. All right. So now you've narrowed it down to a 4.0 and we're going to narrow it down some more. Further narrowing moves next to the half grades. Is the grade now closer to 5.0 or 3.0? If a 5.0, the last narrowing is between a 5.0, 4.5 and 4.0. At this point, 
point, a reassessment of the defects and, uh, and the appearance of the book at arm's length may help with the final decision, and seasoned graders can often narrow a grade within seconds. So this just goes to show you how quickly a book can be graded, uh, you know, just by the narrowing method. Of course, it takes more time to actually count the pages and look for defects on the inside of the book. Um, but at, after you've done that part, you know, you can very quickly determine the grade of the book. It also goes on to say that it's not uncommon for a book to fall between grades. You know, oftentimes a book is between a four five and a five or between a five zero and a five five. And whether it gets, if it, say it's between a five zero and a five five, if it ends up getting a 5.5, it might be a gift grade at a 5.5 is what I like to call it. Or if it's a 5.0, if it was in between 5.0 and 5.5 and it comes back a 5.0, I would say that that is a harsh 5.0. So that's why when you hear that term in the community, like it's a 5.0, but it presents better, or it's a harsh 5.0, or it's a generous 5.0, it's important to understand those things it's a small nuance to collecting and um, you know it can play an important role for some books you know the difference between a 5.0 and a 5.5 is a big deal so it's important to be able to identify that so now that we've gone over the general framework of how to grade a comic book it's important to reiterate that this is a skill that's established over time and that's why i created the playlist establishing a first impression that just goes over content of me unboxing books from cgc comparing it to the graders notes uh, to get a better understanding of how CGC grades books and being able to establish that first impression. Because enough, a lot of times, being able to establish a first impression just based on the cover can be enough to carry you through this hobby. It definitely puts you one step ahead of the average collector is to be able to establish a first impression. Um, and so I put a link in the description to that video, that playlist of, of me, just lots of content of me evaluating um, and comparing different books. The next step, you might wanna pick this book up the official CGC guide to grading comics and look at section five, which goes over all 109 different defects that they have categorized and then go over the next section, um, which is how they group those different defects together into the different grade categories. That would be the next step for learning how to grade comics is to get familiar with the index of defects and how they group together in grades. If that's something that interests you, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell because I will be doing future videos diving even deeper into this but we needed to develop and establish the general framework first i hope that this video was helpful to you don't forget that by subscribing commenting and liking this video you're entered to win a monthly giveaway this month it's a 12 cent x-men comic and if you head over to brycecomics.com and sign up for the newsletter you're also entered to win another 12 cent x-men comic this month new giveaway each and every month that's where i send out first access to new collections that come through discount codes mystery boxes and all kinds of stuff over at BriceComics.com. Use code COLLECT10 for 10% off. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram for trades for grails and other fresh content over there and live sales. And lastly, I go live uh, for live comic book auctions on whatnot all the time. We're having a ton of fun over there. Link in the description for $15 towards your first purchase. And I usually have something in the buy it now for 15 bucks. So if you set up a new account, come stop by. You can pick up a free book. Uh, you just have to pay for shipping. Thank you as always for sticking with me to the end of the video and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Bryce Comics.